Games you'll see in the maximum dimension. You'll need to put together a max kit. Some pieces of paper, a pen or pencil, 30 or so sticks, and a deck of cards. Some or all of these things may be used today. Hello. This is the maximum dimension. And this is where you get to get out of your seat and join me here, right at your TV set, to play a game. So come and join me right at your TV screen. And the game we'll play involves this set of designs. Yes, you're right. It looks like the game known as tic-tac-toe, or some people call it knots and crosses. It's a little more complicated than the usual version, but I think it'll be just fine for this game. Come to the TV set, put your finger onto any O. Keep your finger there. Now, move your finger left or right to the nearest X. Stay there, because the challenge is for me to eliminate some of the designs without getting rid of the one your finger is on. And I think I can safely remove the entire right-hand column. So far, so good. Move your finger up or down to the nearest O. Keep your finger there, and I'll eliminate the top row. Now, make one move to the left. And I'll get rid of the ones that are now on the right column. You're going to move your finger one more time, but this time you get a choice. You can move your finger up, down, left or right. The choice is yours. Make that move now. Keep your finger there. And I'll get rid of that one. This time, you get to make three moves. And again, the choice is yours, up, down, left, or right. Make those three moves now. Keep your finger there. And I think I can safely do away with that. Make two moves. And this time, I'll eliminate the one over there. Make one final move. Keep your finger exactly there. And I will eliminate one X and one O. O. Your best sweep for two nights and the LaSalle sweep for one. Right. And can you make sure that the flower arrangements and the fruit baskets have arrived by the time they check in? Great. Thank you. Dare I ask? Oh, this. I've been working like three nights this week. See, my office is holding an international conference, and my boss has asked me to do all the travel arrangements for the delegates. That's wonderful, Samantha. It's long hours and it's hard work, but I love it. Well, it certainly sounds like it's right up your alley. But that's not the best part. One of the delicates is an old friend of mine. I haven't seen her since high school. I'm sure it'll be a memorable reunion. However, I must ask that you refrain from using that cell phone in my home. Sure. Why? Well, it gives off frequencies that can interfere with other important electronic signals. Like what? Signals from another planet? I didn't say that. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Hey, guys. <laughs> Well, it appears you're not the only one who's dressed up today, Samantha. What? <laughs> Need we ask, Ben? Oh, this. Didn't think you'd notice. Yeah, right. Why are you wearing it? Well, I'm going to get punched in the stomach later, so I'm wearing this pillow for protection. Who's going to punch you in the stomach? My little cousin, Kenny. He's only five, but he's really into action figures, so I got him a Mega Minch. You know the one with double-barreled laser guidance system and optional torque-adjusted viewfinder. I don't get it. 
Why is your cousin going to punch you because you're giving him a gift? Well, it's like this. I'll go over to Kenny's house. I'll give him the gift, and he'll love it. Then his little sister Jennifer will want to play with it. The gift will get broken. Kenny will yell at Jennifer for breaking his gift. Jennifer will then run to her mother, who will then punish Kenny by taking away his television and watching privileges for a week. And he'll get so mad, he'll punch me in the stomach. Good thing I have the pillow, huh? Oh, well, Benjamin, you've obviously given this a lot of thought. But are you sure you've thought of everything? Pretty sure. Why? Well, I just hate to see you get punched in the stomach simply because you hadn't thought of all the possibilities. Allow me to demonstrate. I'll show you something, and you tell me what comes next. We'll begin with an easy one. Thirteen. Can you tell me what follows next? Well, that's easy. Fourteen. No, wait. It might not increase by one. It might increase by two or three. Interesting observation, Benjamin. But what's more interesting is that you've both made the same basic assumption. Which is? I'll show you. Good one, Max. We would have figured it out eventually. Fair enough. Then I'll give you a second chance. Any ideas? Well, the next letter is N, so... Wait, it may not be an alphabetical sequence. It could be a word. Right. A word that starts with M. Maybe it's some kind of a zigzag pattern. Now you're getting warmer. I'll show you the next item in the sequence. No fair. You can't use a letter from another alphabet. Well, you're on the right track, but I assure you, this is from a language that everyone understands. I'm lost. Could you give us another hint? I'll do better than that. I'll show you the next three items. Would you like me to show you the answer? Yes. No, wait. I think I've got it. What's that supposed to be? The next item in the sequence. Well done. It is? Yeah. I swear, you guys must plan this beforehand. Look. Each pattern is a number, and it's mere image in sequence. Come again? Observe. Hello? Right, hold on. Sorry, Max, it's my boss. Be back in a second. Yep. No, 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 I got that done. Would you care to see another sequence? Well, actually, I've got a brain teaser that deals with a sequence of events. Care to see it? Certainly. It's quite a collection. Well, always be prepared. Ah. Now all I need is a pair of scissors and a cup with a handle. Will a teacup do? That'd be fine. I need a minute to prepare, so I'm gonna go in the living room. Jelly beans. I wonder if he has any black ones. Hello, Max. Need something from the puzzle boxes? I require a pair of scissors and a teacup. Ah, uh, do you have a specific cup in mind? I thought Benjamin might enjoy the Spanish cup. You know the one I mean? Yes, I do, Max, but may I remind you that the cup in question was given to Christopher Columbus by Queen Isabella and dates back to 1492? Your point is valid, Pi, but hmm. I trust Benjamin to take good care of it. <sighs> no way. Thank you, Pi. You're welcome, Max. Oh, this headache. Here you are, Benjamin. Please be very careful with this. Wow. This is a really cool cup. When did you get it? Oh, it's a little something I picked up on an ocean voyage some years back. Benjamin, please, that's very fragile. Don't worry, it's gonna be fine. Perhaps we could use a different cup for this. Too late, already tied to the string. I'm trusting you. 
I'm going to cut the string about there, and the cup is not going to fall to the floor and shatter. Do you have any guesses of how I'm going to do it? I, I don't even want to think about it. You give up? No, don't be hasty here. I, I, let me consider the situation for a moment uh, before you do anything rash. Uh, uh, may I borrow your pillow? What for? Well, I've deduced that what you propose to do is cut the string and then try to catch the cup before it hits the floor and shatters into a thousand pieces. And it is precisely to avoid that outcome that I'm placing the pillow below. All set? I hope so. Very, very clever, albeit rather cruel. I must confess, I jumped to a conclusion rather too soon. But this puzzle does show us something rather interesting. What's that? Well, sometimes by changing a sequence, you can also change the outcome. Oh, I really thought Max's cup was history, didn't you? I wish that cell phone was. Oh, that ringing. Well, I've got a revised sequence of events that I think will unfold when I get to Kenny's house. Now all I need is an umbrella. Why? Is it going to rain this afternoon? No, I just remember that Kenny likes water balloons. And? And he should have a few empty ones on hand, right? So when I give him the Mega Minge action figure and he gets in a fight with Jennifer about it, in addition to losing his television privileges, his mum will probably send the both of them for a timeout up in their rooms. Ah, I still don't see where the umbrella fits in. Kenny's room is right above the front door. So when he gets sent to his room, he might sneak downstairs and fill up a couple balloons and wait for us to leave right above the window. So when I leave, drops them on my head. So the purpose of the umbrella is to avoid getting soaked. Right. Well thought out, Benjamin. But surely there's a better way to handle this situation. Hmm. I guess you're right. Maybe I could just look up and wear a raincoat in case he tries a frontal attack. So much for my planning. Problem, Samantha? I just found out that my friend can't make it to the conference on Monday. Oh, that is unfortunate. <sighs> We were bringing her in to make a presentation to all the delegates. Now that she's not coming, there's a dead spot in the middle of the day and it throws the entire conference out of whack. Can't you just hire someone else? I tried. I can't find anybody. Couldn't you change the meeting to a different day? Mm, it's too expensive to keep everyone in a hotel for an extra day. It's too bad. I was looking forward to seeing her. What is with the paper, Ben? Oh, Benjamin is still trying to sort out that familial dilemma. You know, I thought about that. I, I came up with a solution. Really? You did? Yeah. An ancient form of self-defense. Hi-ya! There's only five. Come on, Ben. You know, perhaps the best way to approach this is in a more realistic fashion. Sounds good to me. Go down to the laboratory and ask Pi for my silver sack. Not a problem. You'd best go, too. I need some moments to prepare. Okay. And speaking of preparation, you'll be able to try this game out at home. So pay close attention to what we're going to do so that you can do it later. Back again, Max? It's me, Pi. Oh, sorry, Benjamin. Slight headache. What can I do for you? I need to get something from the puzzle boxes. Oh, well then answer this. A uh, dog is tied to a leash five feet long. Six feet away is a bowl of dog food. How is it possible for the dog to eat from the bowl? Mm. Well, maybe he hooks it with his hind leg or something. No, no. If the leash is connected to the collar and the collar is connected to the neck, Oh, I know. You didn't say what the leash was connected to. And if it's not connected to anything, well, the dog can just walk over to the bowl. Right? I got one. Right on. Oh, congratulations, Benjamin. And may I say, I like your suit. Um, well, thank you, Pi. But Benjamin would look pretty funny in a dress, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, Samantha. What can I get for you? 
Okay, Max sent us to get him his silver sack. His what? Silver sack. Oh, of course. That's such a lovely instrument. Oh, no. Yes, Samantha? Oh, that music was so soothing. I'm not Samantha. And I said a silver sack, like a bag, not a silver sax, like a saxophone. I prefer a saxophone to some other phones I know. Thank you, Pi. Thanks, Pi. <sighs> What's in the box? Well, we'll get to that in a moment, but I want to show you these. This is an ancient game with many variations. Dominoes. Now, some sets contain as many as 55 of these tiles. They have various uh, combinations of spots with numbers going from zero to nine. Uh, in this case, we're using a reduced set. We have a one and a two, and a five and a six, different pairings of the spots so that there are all the combinations using zero through six with no doubles. Are you paying attention, Samantha? Yes, yes, every word, every word. Hmm. The idea is to put the dominoes together into one continuous chain using all of the dominoes, matching them up so that the one goes with a one or the five goes with a five and so forth. I'm interested in this beautiful box over here. You know, it's my birthday next month. I'll be sure to keep that in mind. The box contains my prediction. Your prediction for what? The domino game. May I continue? Oh, wait, sorry. Sorry. Hello? Oh, hold on. Sorry, Max, it's my boss. I have to take it. Yep, I had that cleared by the finance department. So should we wait for her? Well, she seems to be otherwise engaged. I don't think she'll mind if we press on. Great. One continuous chain. This should be a breeze. Not as easy as you might have imagined. It can take many attempts before a correct sequence is found. I think I've tried them all. Perhaps. Well, let's see what you've done. You have a five at this end of the chain, and over here, there's a three. Okay. And now my prediction. Voila. Five and three. How did you do that? Oh, quite simple. You see, the lid was holding Very the sides funny, in place Max. and... I still don't get it. I tried so many different combinations. How could you possibly predict it would end up like this? Well, you see, Benjamin, when you use a complete set of dominoes and make a chain, it actually makes a circle. Let me neatly bring this around. Now, if you break the circle by removing one domino, oh, say, for example, the five and three, well, then the broken ends of the chain would have to be a five and a three. And if I replace the five and three domino, the circle is once again complete. Oh, I see. So if I remove the five, four domino... Then no matter how other parts of the sequence might vary, the ends of the broken chain would have to be a five and a four. I get it. So if you change the sequence of events, you can also change the outcome. Just like the teacup. Bingo. Guess what? I can't believe it. My boss decided to change the conference. Why? What happened? Well, after all my hard work and planning, after the hotel reservations and the flight bookings, they decided it would be easier and cheaper to hold the entire conference by phone. That's technology for you. Oh, Samantha, I am sorry. Can't you turn that thing off? I will, after this call, I promise. Hello? Oh, hi, Libby. Really? Yeah, I'll pick you up at the airport. 
I can't believe this. My girlfriend's coming in this weekend after all. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Have a nice weekend, Samantha. Ah. Hey, Max, do you think I could borrow these dominoes? I think they're really cool. Well, of course. Yeah, how about Jennifer? We're just a little... Hey, that's it. I could play dominoes with Jennifer while Kenny played with his action figure. Then there'd be no fights, no timeouts, and best of all, no water balloons or no punches in the stomach. Now that's what I call progress. Great. Thanks a lot, Max. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Benjamin. Well, that was an interesting sequence of events, wouldn't you say? Now I've got to find Pi, because with all of her erratic behavior, I'm hoping she hasn't misplaced my Mega Minch action figure. Oh, Pi. Yes, Samantha. Don't go away. You have one more chance to solve the game we started with. It should be easier the second time, now that my headache's gone. Ready? Let the game begin! Come to the TV set, put your finger onto any O. Keep your finger there. Now, move your finger left or right to the nearest X. Stay there because the challenge is for me to eliminate some of the designs without getting rid of the one your finger is on. And I think I can safely remove the entire right-hand column. So far, so good. Move your finger up or down to the nearest O. Keep your finger there and I'll eliminate the top row. Now, make one move to the left. And I'll get rid of the ones that are now on the right column. You're going to move your finger one more time, but this time you get a choice. You can move your finger up, down, left or right. The choice is yours. Make that move now. Keep your finger there, and I'll get rid of that one. This time, you get to make three moves. And again, the choice is yours, up, down, left, or right. Make those three moves now. Keep your finger there, and I think I can safely do away with that. Make two moves. And this time, I'll eliminate the one over there. Make one final move. Keep your finger exactly there. And I will eliminate one X and one O. Oh.